Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here with another episode of Short Circuits. Today we'll be going over how to make a 2D game with a camera that follows your character around. You can see that the player also doesn't have any turning time between the turns, he just snaps to the left and the right. So we'll just be going through how to make this today. We'll start off with a fresh scene and we'll go and grab out a blank deluxe puppet plunk that down and we'll jump into the logic of the puppet and just remove the level complete and the follow behavior chips because we won't need those. Now for this setup we're going to want to restrict the player's movement to two planes and we'll really only be using the left and the right directions from the left stick rather than up and down so we can completely remove these. We'll grab out a microchip just to keep things nice and tidy and we'll give that a custom icon and we'll call this movement restriction and we'll just put down a node first now generally you would probably use the default left stick output that's on the face of the gadget here but that stick output is actually the left stick and we want to use the left stick local because we don't want to take the camera position into account. So we'll plug that into our node. Now we'll want to know when the player is pressing left and right. So we'll need to split this stick with a splitter into its separate left, right and up and down directions. Now we won't be using the up and down directions at all. So we'll grab out a combiner and we'll set this to the sticks input. And we're only going to wire the left and right output into the left and right input, and we're not going to wire the up and down into it. This will effectively disable up and down on the left stick. We'll clone this node, and we'll make this one an output. And we'll plug our modified stick signals into that node and now we can grab that output and plug it directly into our walk. If we go into test mode now, you can see that our player can only walk left and right, and he can't walk up and down at all. Now we'll want to make sure that our player is stuck to that plane, and we'll use a follower for that, so we'll go back into our movement restriction chip, because this is also part of the movement restriction, We'll grab out a follower. Now followers of course work with tags, so we'll grab out a microchip for our scene here. Make sure that we're scoped out of the puppet so we don't group that with the puppet. We'll put this on the grid and we'll grab out a microchip and put a tag down on it. And we'll rename this tag to plane. Now we'll open up the tweak menu of the plane tag and we'll move the tag origin just to the location that we want our player to be stuck. So we'll have them stuck in the middle of this block. With our tag in the right spot, we can close that tweak menu and go into our follower and change that to follow the plane tag. We'll turn the strength and the dampening all the way up we'll turn the speed up as well so they're sucked to that plane very quickly. Now we don't want the follower to affect our X and our Y movement at all, so we'll just turn down the X and the Y strength and dampening. And you can see now that if we hit play, the player is sucked to that plane and they're stuck there. If we jump into test mode again now, you can see that our player is stuck to that plane no matter what happens to them and they can only move left and right. The player still takes a fair bit of time to turn around though, and we want that to be instant. So we'll just go through how to make that now. We'll want to know when the player is pressing left and right respectively, so we'll grab out another splitter and plug the left and right direction into that splitter so we get these separate right and left directions, positive and negative. We'll also just grab out a selector and we'll plug the right signal into the B port and the left signal 
into the C port. So we'll just go into the tweak menu here and change this to three outputs and inputs. So the reason we're doing this is because by default, the A port is active and we don't want that default port to mess up our signals for the outputs. So to make our player turn immediately, we're going to use a teleporter. So we'll grab out a teleporter here and the teleporters also work with tags. So we're going to need a couple more tags in our scene. Just clone this twice. And we're going to want to name these after the directions that they're facing. So we'll name this one left. And we'll name this one right. So for the left one, we'll jump into the tweak menu. We're going to make the X direction point in the left. And we'll go into the tweak menu for the right. And that's already facing the correct direction with the X facing to the right. Now with this teleporter, we'll make this one look for the right tag. And we'll duplicate that and make this one look for the left tag. So when the player presses right on the stick, which will activate the output B, we want to activate the teleporter that teleports them to the right tag. Then when they press left on the stick, we want it to activate the left teleporter. We'll modify both of these teleporter settings and we'll turn off the match target position button and we'll turn on the match target orientation so that the teleporters don't teleport the player to the location of the tag but only change the orientation of the player. You can see that if we open up the tweak menu, the X axis for the teleporter is pointing to its left, which is not what we want, so we need to drag this around to the front. Basically, all of these movement gadgets end up with the default output pointing to the left for some reason, so just keep that in mind. You will have to move these around to the front if you want things to work correctly. So now if we jump back into test mode with those hooked up, You can see that our player teleports immediately to the left and right directions with no turning time in between. But for some reason, the animations are lost when the teleporter is kept on. This wasn't the case back in the beta. I don't know if this is going to stay that way, but at the moment, an easy workaround is to just pulse the teleporter. So we'll just move this microchip out so we've got a bit more room. And we'll grab out a pulsing gadget, which We'll use a signal manipulator. There's a few things you can use, but we'll just use a signal manipulator set to the pulse at input on option. And we'll just reroute our signals through the pulsing signal manipulators. We'll duplicate that. And we'll just reroute that signal through that pulsing signal manipulator. So now the teleporters will only be on for a frame. So we'll just immediately teleport the player and then turn off. You can see that the teleporter's orientation has reset again for some reason. Um, not quite sure why it's doing that just at the moment. I think that might be a bit of a bug. Uh, but keep in mind, the teleporter's orientation does reset sometimes. I'll just quickly reset those. Drag the X axis back to the front of the puppet again. I'll try that again. There we go. So yeah, just keep that in mind. The teleporter's orientation can reset sometimes if you unplug the power. That's about all we need for the puppet side, but now we want the camera to follow our puppet. For this, we'll want something to move with the player. So we'll make a camera block just with a default cube here. And we'll snap a microchip to this one. And we'll give this a camera icon so we know it's the camera. And we will of course grab out a camera That'll be fine where it is there. We'll also set this block to be invisible because we don't want it to block the camera's view at all. And we'll want this block to follow the player. So we'll grab out a follower. And followers, of course, work with tags. So we'll grab out another tag. We'll plunk that down. And we'll name this tag player, just to keep it nice and easy. Oop. We'll set this follower to follow the tag player. 
will set the strength and dampening up fairly high. Let's turn this to about 90%. And we want to set the maximum speed to about however quickly our player can run. So in this case, we'll set it to about 15. So it's got a bit of leeway to catch up if it does for whatever reason fall behind. We only want this block to follow the player on the X and the Y axis. We don't want this block to follow the players on the Z axis, otherwise it'll move straight to them. So if we turn the Z strength and dampening down and hit play, you can see the block moves to the player. It's actually moving to the foot of the player because by default, the tag will appear at the player's feet. So we'll just move that tag, whoops. We'll just move that tag orientation a bit, just to the center of the player, and you can see the camera is now pointing at the center of the player. So in play mode here, you can see that the camera tracks the player and moves with them wherever they go. With this sort of setup, you can also change the planes that the player is stuck to. So you could have at one moment that the player is stuck to this plane here, and they can't move up and down. And then you could have a spot where they hit and it changes the plane that they're on. They're actually able to walk around the object. And then when they hit the other plane, you can see the player is now stuck to this one. This is a little bit more of a complex setup, but basically all it's doing is changing the tags that the player is following. You can see at the moment that this tag on our left here is active and that's the plane that we're stuck to. And then I've got another tag here on this block that I can hit and it activates a trigger zone on the block that activates the tag. And this block is on a joint that moves around the pole. So you can actually have a player walk around something at a set distance. Then you can have something else that they trigger to pull them off that walking around section. And you can see that they're now stuck to a different plane. And that's about all there is to this 2D setup, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.